he joined me on a lovely July fresh morning and I thought what better way to start this one than to have a look around the site. stroll along the plots and have a look what's growing. Nice poppy heads here, just going to see and I'll show they'll be like a nice scattering on the plot later on. Potatoes there have started to be harvested. And then we have uh, two or three more rows of peas. Followed by some parsnips. Broad beans or fava beans, whatever you are. He's got a bit of ground being cultivated there. There's some uh, pot leeks. I've always intended to grow in some of these, but I've never ever got round to it yet. Always forget to sow any. These brassicas are all netted against the pigeons. As you can see, he's got some nice sprouts coming along. The garden this plot is renowned for growing some decent onions and as usual he's come up with the goods. All these are grown from seed and I, I think these ones are um, Robinson's mammoth. These poppies just appear from nowhere and uh, they've got a beautiful flower head on as you can see. The elephant garlic has gone to seed and has put a lovely display on there. Some asparagus. I think that's a bit of a light variety. As you can see, there's some young spears that have just appeared. I'm not sure if you can see in the greenhouse there because of the uh, mist. We've got some decent sized tomatoes already on there. The guy on this plot has only taken it on last year and he's done a well, it's a really good job. As you can see, it's in top class condition and he looks as though he's got some decent crops on there. These parsnips are doing well. The main issue most people have with the parsnips is weeding for fear of damaging the stems, but this looks in quite good condition. Now about that for a batch of sweet corn. If you looked at the bottom, it's quite a few got multi stems. So I'd expect quite a few cobs off this lot. Now the guy on this plot, he grows some amazing flowers, of course veg as well, but the flowers, he has some weird and wonderful things growing. I'll just turn you around because the sun's in the way. Those delphiniums there, I think he had the seed from the Chelsea Flower Show a few years ago. And quite a few people on this site now are after the seeds when they go over. The, uh, the flowers are starting to fade, but earlier on in the season, I wish I'd have filmed it, the flowers have got a beautiful sheen on them. So, uh, 
That's the dolphin nose. As you can see there, he's got a, a banana. It's doing quite well. This is another one which is, attracts quite a lot of attention. He's got the bottle brush, and that's just starting to flower now, as you can see. There's another little banana down the bottom. Amongst another, well, quite a few lilies he's got on there, which is why they just gone over or still in flower. Another bottle brush. And my personal favourite is this banana here. That's a beauty. There's another delphinium. And I think that white one there is a yucca, I think, I'm not sure. You may recall a few episodes back that uh, I helped a couple of girls on there, Julia and Vicky, to uh, install this greenhouse. It's one of my old frames and they purchased the polycarb. And uh, as you can see, it looks pretty good now. The next stage of the project is to put some uh, method of auto watering in. And the last couple of weeks we uh, have installed this IBC tank. It's a bit of a struggle getting it in because the gaps are quite narrow and uh, more or less the same width of the tank, but we managed it in the end. As I say, the, uh, the next plan is to install the solar system. I covered it, um, I think it's the Malvern Show, it's a company called Irrigation, and uh, it works off a solar panel which then drips at uh, set intervals to uh, irrigate the plants. We've already got plants in here, as you can see, although we've got a fly screen in as well, it probably doesn't show too good. So in the next few episodes, the uploads, uh, that's possibly something we'll look forward to sharing with you. It's amazing how this time of the year the stuff quickly moves along, especially if we have a drop of rain. And it's only been two or three weeks since these was planted and already there's massive growth on. Same with the couple of beds here. The guy who owns this plot is, uh, is in for a knee surgery quite soon, so he was a bit reluctant what to plant in case he couldn't tend to it. So at the last minute, he threw four rows of uh, sarpomere in, and again, within less than a week, that's what's happened. This plot here belongs to Andy and Marina and they always grow a good variety of various crops. Traditional method of growing these peas is using pea sticks and the peas seem to love it, they're just clinging. So I remember I'm putting these in not so long ago and as you can see they're uh, just romping up now. Of course I've got this grapevine on there which seems to have gone a bit wild. It's as I say, once that settles in, I think we're going to have a decent crop of that. I'll just have a quick look as the greenhouse is open. And uh, what we've got in here? got peppers and uh, lots of tomatoes. Obviously got some uh, form marigold or something there that's using as companion planting. Yeah, and you can see there's a pepper in there we went already in. plot here belongs to a guy, Keith, very nice chap, and uh, a very experienced gardener, as you can tell from the state of the plot, it's in immaculate condition, he spends hours and hours weeding, and uh, there's a joke on this site that the weeds are scared to grow on this plot. <laughs> I've got a couple of more half plots here. And the, uh, this one is Samantha, and the one at the back is the two girls, Julia and Vicky. They've got another half plot down there. Again, there's another example of these poppies which just randomly appear. And as you can see, the flowers are beautiful. This is the thorn in our side on this side. As you can see, the state of this plot, mare's tail everywhere. And would you believe it, this belongs to one of the local councillors. 
complaints have gone into the local council who administer the site, but it seems to be falling on deaf ears for some reason. Anyway, that's the state of the play on this site. Unfortunately, it's next to mine, and the mare's tail starting to creep across. Moving along now, this guy on here had a massive crop of broad beans and I'm on the way out now. And the other chap on there, as you can see, he's got his uh, Envirimesh tents up fighting against the insects and pests. The tour always seems to end here. And of course, this is my plot. Looks like another glorious day's in store, so why not take this opportunity to lift up the shallots and also the garlic. We actually got more shallots than I thought. Uh, I'm in the greenhouse in the garden now and I've got an upturned baker's tray to get a bit of air under and I've started to lay them out. This tray is obviously not going to be big enough because uh, that's probably less than the crop of shallots. I'll just show you what's still left on the plot. And this is what's remaining. As you can see there's still a fair few to go. Uh, I'll see if I can get a meal all into the green nest because ideally I'd like to dry them out, a good thorough dry nest. Because at the end of the day, these uh, what are used for pickling, they make excellent pickled onions. So uh, I'll take a bit of care over these. That's all the shallots took out. One more job left to do now is just get the garlic. I'm going to leave the elephant garlic in for the time being, let it go over a bit more. But we'll see what we've got on the garlic front. That's the crop of garlic we've got, and uh, it's a decent crop, I'm quite happy with that. What I'll do with that now is string it up and uh, hang it in the greenhouse to dry. I've given the garlic and shallot bed, as was, a little tidy up rake over. And uh, I've got a pot there of leeks, which I'd originally sown beginning of the year, I think it was. I'm still going strong, so I've decided to put them out. And you notice I've got the marking board. There'll be 12 in a row. I'm not sure how many rows we'll get yet, but we'll see. I bored a couple of holes now. And uh, opening up the pack of leeks, you can see that some of these have gone quite thick already, and like spring onions almost. They'll still be okay, and hopefully it'll make them catch up a little bit quicker. I managed to get 24 leeks out of that box, which was rather surprising, and they're all a fair decent size. So I'll give those a water in, and uh, that's it for them. The broad beans are starting to come to an end now, so I'm just going to have the last final pickings of it. We have done had a really good crop this year, and uh, ended up freezing most of them because we just gone out on quick enough. Anyway, I'll just pick what's left.
Well, I think it's safe to say we're not going to run out of beans in the near future in our house. This has got to be the best crop of broad beans that I've ever had. And the variety is uh, Bunyard's Exhibition. And this is the either the second or third pick I have. I've had done, it's about four weeks ago, it was the last one. Some of these have started to go over, but nonetheless, that'll say us through. So, Bunyard's, thumbs up from me. Well, that's the end of the planting for today. It's been a blistering hot day. Unfortunately, it's the end of this episode as well. So, uh, until next time, I'll see you later, and bye for now.